Hello, everyone. We're going to give folks a few moments to join us, and then we will get started. If you're just joining us, we're going to wait just a moment longer, and then we will get started. <laughs> My name is Sheila Lamb, and I'm with the Virginia SBDC Network. For those of you that are not familiar with our organization, the Virginia Small Business Development Center is a partnership program between the U.S. Small Business Administration, George Mason University, and local host institutions throughout Virginia. With 26 locations across the Commonwealth, we provide training and technical assistance to small businesses and their local communities. Our one-on-one -on -one advising services are available at no charge. Today's webinar, The Future of Cybersecurity, Trends and Innovations for Small Businesses, is presented by the Virginia SBDC Network. We are recording today's presentation and it will be posted on our website, virginiasbdc.org. Due to the large number of participants, everyone's microphone is muted and the chat feature is turned off. But if you have questions during the presentation, you can type those into the Q&A box and we will address them at the end of the session. We have also enabled the live transcript function, which you can show or hide via your own meeting controls. And now it is my pleasure to introduce our presenter for today's session, Kiana Ganey. Kiana is a 20 plus year IT and cybersecurity industry veteran and has served as Chief Executive Officer for SecureTech 360 located in Springfield, Virginia since its inception in 2010. She is also the Cyber Industry Specialist for the Virginia SBDC. Welcome, Kiana. Thank you, Sheila. And welcome to everyone. Um, today, we'll be talking about the future of cybersecurity, trends, innovations, and some tips for your small business. Next slide. So again, um, wonderful introduction, a little bit about myself and my background. Been in the industry for about 20 years. And as you can imagine, I've seen a lot of different trends. Um, and so 2024 has not been, has been a wild ride as it relates to cybersecurity, but I have some tips and some, some tricks to be able to help your small business navigate this new landscape. Next slide. So a little bit about myself. Um, like she mentioned, I have 20 years experience, but I'm really excited about my new role here and we'll just dive right into today's presentation. So, in today's digital age, you know, cyber threats are relentless. Um, we're, we're being inundated with information in our inboxes, on our cell phones, and sometimes even our physical security. But what can help, regardless of your size of your business, with the evolving cyber threat landscape, is having things in place to be what I like to call cyber resilient. Um, in cyber, being cyber resilient is just your ability to be able to, one, be prepared, know what to do when something happens, so to be able to respond, and most importantly, is to recover from cyber attacks. If you've watched the news over the weekend, um, over the last few days, there was a major um, IT outage that um, was quite cyber related as well, and that was for a large company that really caused disruption for most of our everyday lives. You saw flights being canceled, you saw some government agency that also reported that they were, was not able to log in. And so these are small things that even as a large organization that they still have to implement. And even as a small business owner with less resources, right? Um, very limited budgets. There are things that can help you be able to be able to one, be prepared, know what to do if something happens and also to recover. So as you saw, even though there was an incident that happened, even though recovery is still underway in certain instances with that major outage, they were able to respond to it. They were able to get messaging out to their stakeholders and to their customers, and they had a plan in place. And key for that was them to be in prepared, right? They were able to protect certain assets. They were trying to maintain a reputation and that's still out, the jury's still out on that. And then they were really trying to ensure that customers trust by being able to recover or have a plan about recovery. So things that you need to keep you know, eye out as the evolving cyber threat landscape is here, 
most of these uh, cyber attacks are becoming very sophisticated. But there are also some common threats. There are the phishing emails, um, ransomware, where you know uh, hackers are taking very vital and critical information and they're holding as ransom before so that people can pay them in order to get their information back. And then also things like data breaches where they can cause disruption to organizations and also where they're trying to get information from an organization to be able to cause more of things like we talked about earlier, um, to cause more of a havoc on their infrastructure. And also things like make, making their reputation seem a little shaky in the industry where that is ever changing. So one of the most important and key aspects as a small business owner is to stay updated on these emerging threats, to be able to educate your employees. And if you're just a, a, a party of one, just making sure that you're staying abreast of what's going on and having you some type of um, response procedures in place will be very key to be able to navigate this evolving cyber threat landscape. Next slide. So the reality is all businesses, regardless of size, are at risk, right? Small businesses may feel that they are they're not targets because you're like, why would they want my data? Why would they want to attack my business? I don't have anything worth stealing. Well, it could be maybe some of the systems that you're interconnected with. It could be the customers that you're serving. It could be the type of data that you have that they may want. Um, there's usually not a rhyme or reason sometimes on why certain groups are always targeted and why some groups are, you know, are not on the, the targeted list. But one thing you have to be prepared for is to understand that it's here, it's happening, and regardless of your size, we're all at risk. Um, another thing is that only a small percentage of cyber attacks are con considered target attacks. And what that means is that the attacker group is only going after your company. There, you're not thinking about, like I just mentioned, it could be a particular, a type of company, a group of companies that they're trying to steal certain data. They don't discriminate. They are targeting vulnerable computer systems. And that can be whether you are a one man shop, a small business, um, your home user, a Fortune 500 company, um, it doesn't matter. They do not discriminate. So one of the key ways to be on top of this is to be prepared. Next slide. So some things that, some tips and tricks I want to leave you with um, as far as this presentation today is that there are some things that we can use and even leverage. Um, there's AI and machine learning. They have have some new ways of you know helping us with threat detection and responses. Um, at and, and at a minimum, it will be able to let you know in real time if something's happening, and also help help you be able to, with the response and recovery in the event that something happened. Another new trend is what uh, the government is using, and and mostly maybe you're going to start seeing more in the private sector, is what they're calling the zero trust security model, and what that basically means is that just how it even sounds, zero trust, meaning so even if you have certain things in place, you still want to validate and verify your users that are in your infrastructure. You want to make sure that you have certain access control procedures in place. You want to make sure that if you are using service providers, you want to know what their privacy policies are. You want to know how they will protect your data. You want to make sure that you're doing everything you can as a small business owner to make sure that anyone that's in your trusted circle, right, that you have been able to validate and verify that they are they can be in the circle of trust. And then one other new trend that you're seeing um, for 2024 because of we're in um, we're in a lot of uncharted water. There's in increased regulation and compliance. Um, there are new regulations for small businesses. Um, anyone that's doing business with the government, they have a whole compliance um, regulation that you have to adhere to to be able to do business with the government. And that's regardless of your size, right? So those are things that you have to be abreast of. And even if you're using things like healthcare data, understand what HIPAA is like, what HIPAA is required, um, how, what kind of regulations um, will impact you and your, your stakeholders, your customer base, and understand what you will need to do to protect your small business in the event that something happens. Next slide. 
So there are some solutions that you can use, right? Um, you can use a managed service providers. What the managed service managed security service providers can help you with your small business. If this is not something that you do, they can have um, cloud security solutions that can help you be able to navigate some of the um, services and applications that you're using. Another thing that you can do, which is doesn't cost much, um, it's just a matter of you putting together some type of security awareness training for your employees. And that can be done when you first hire someone, um, anytime that there's a significant event that happens in your infrastructure. Um, I like to even add it to my weekly um, staff meetings or quarterly staff meetings, or if I have an all hands meeting, we talk about a cybersecurity tip of the day. I talk to my, or my employees about things that are happening um, do you see an increased number of phishing attacks? Are you receiving weird emails from inside or outside the organization? Um, I even go as far as like looking at a phishing email and breaking it down and saying, let's look and see what was wrong with this email. Um, what do you what do you see? And we start the conversation because I think if you keep it front of mind, those are key ways to have an effective training program and making sure that your employees understand what to do in the event of an emergency, in the event of an incident, or in the event that you are a victim of uh, one of these cyber threats. Next slide. So another strategy that you can use as a small business owner is building a robust cybersecurity strategy. And what that simply means is having uh, detailed steps about what to do in the event of emergency. Also, if you haven't done it in the past, do a risk assessment on your organization. And that's not necessarily just all of your uh, technical things that you have or any application or devices that you're using, but also one of the biggest um, incidents that happened over the last few years was a social engineering attack. And it was simply someone calling a help desk and being able to get the help desk um, employee to give them vital information and they were able to uh, you know, they were able to um, hack into a very prominent infrastructure, right? So that is something that you can do even as a small business owner is make sure that your employees have the tools and techniques to be able to um, know what to do if someone calls and they're, they're requesting maybe sensitive information about your organization or they're trying to get you to email something right now or they're trying to get you to transfer money or things that seem a little off. I always like to say that cybersecurity is very similar to what we do in our everyday lives, right? We wouldn't allow a stranger into our homes. We wouldn't just give our information to someone that calls up and that's requesting information. It's the same type of principles, even in your small business. And there are things that you can also implement to add just an extra security layer if you're using different uh, mobile devices. Uh, Multi-factor authentication is one, which adds an extra layer of security to be able to authenticate and to send maybe a second text message um, um, to your phone or maybe to an email and to another source to make sure that that's indeed the transaction is happening between the two parties or the party that's trying to um, uh, get access into a system. And then another one, um, if nothing else that we learned from our, our, our counterparts at CrowdStrike and Microsoft is making sure that you do those regular software updates and also, which is very key to making sure that outside of making sure that your systems are patched and secure, but also testing those security updates and not putting them necessarily in production at first, maybe testing them with maybe some non-essential assets to see if those software updates indeed um, do not have any additional security issues or will introduce any additional risk to your infrastructure. So those are things that we talk about putting together a robust cybersecurity strategy to be able to have a plan um, and also to be able to be flexible with that. And outside of building this robust cybersecurity strategy, one of the key things you can do is to test it. You can test it on a quarterly basis, an annual basis, or anytime there's like a significant change that occurs or something happens, use this as an opportunity to update all of your documentation to, um, if you need to make some adjustments to your cybersecurity awareness training, um, if there's different tools and techniques that maybe you need to deploy into your infrastructure to make sure that you're keeping your, um, your organization safe, this is a good time to do that as well. Next slide. 
So in conclusion, I know we kind of went through I mean, very fast we're talking about some of the new technologies and trends and things to look for, but it's really just to make sure that you are making strides to stay in proactive in cybersecurity, which is very crucial for protecting your business. So outside of all the additional technologies and tools you can use, there are just some practical things that you can put into place. One we talked about earlier is, you know, in increasing your posture by making it a robust, putting together a robust cybersecurity strategy, um, putting together plans and different um, procedures on how to and what to do in the event that there's an incident. So that's incident response. Um, what do you do? Who do you contact? Um, I like to even put together a one pager about list of um, stakeholders or different folks that will be impacted if something happens, who to call first, um, if I'm using certain service providers, making sure that I understand what the service level agreement is for each of the uh, providers that I'm using. So if an event that something happens, do I contact them immediately? How does that, how does that work? And then making sure that my employees are trained on all any new technology that we bring into the infrastructure and making sure that you have um, a way to be able to keep the conversation and communication going to be able to stay abreast of all of these new threats that are that are in this new landscape as we are emerging into a society where we use all and most of our business is conducted online and we're using some form of technology, be it, it be a mobile device, a cell phone, and we're using cloud technologies, we're using different applications. Um, and so making sure that we are taking a proactive approach is crucial to you protecting your business long-term. Next slide. So any questions? We do have a couple of questions that have dropped in. Um, <clears throat> let's see, the first one was, where can we find a template for what to do in the event that something happens? Yes, so in the, in the slide presentation, I think we have a list of different resources. Um, CISA.gov is a great place to start. Um, it is an, a, an agency that was stood up that um, is dedicated to helping small businesses and all types of businesses be able to navigate all of these new trends and techniques. They have webinars. They also have a list of resources and different templates. Um, our website, I'm gonna give us a shameless plug, Virginia SBDC also has um, a whole knowledge base that consists of um, previous webinars, templates, some of the partners are things that we provide to our, our, um, our clients as well. Um, and so there is a plethora of information to help you put together these, um, these uh, system security plans, the incident response plans that I talked about. Um, in some cases, disaster recovery plans, right? You wanna know what to do in the event of an emergency. Um, what's the first thing you should bring up? Should you bring up your critical assets or what are your critical assets, right? Because sometimes even I always say, what I've found even with my small business owners is that we, we think about um, our everyday things when we're putting together our business plan, but we don't think about how to protect those items, right? And so there are things that you can put into place, which is really you being proactive to making sure that you are, you know, I always say you don't want to be reacting um, in the middle of a crisis. You want to be prepared for that crisis. And that makes the, um, the, 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 that makes a difference um, in the midst of things happening. Um, I think I had another question about cyber insurance and managing liability in the event of the breach. Yes. yes. So um, depending on the type of insurance that you have, I know depending on the industry or what type of data you're using within your organization, um, talk to your insurance representative, talk to the, whoever is your carrier to see if there is an additional, um, what clauses you already have for protection. Uh, do they have some embedded cyber insurance, um, ins cyber risk insurance embedded into your policies? You'd be surprised, maybe you do, maybe you don't. Um, do they, if they don't, if you do have the option of being able to get this insurance, I would highly recommend it. I know it's, it's another cost and we think about cost, but I always say it's either sometimes I think about prevention is the best cure, right? So you wanna use preventive things and then you wanna have something in place. As I saw in the news today, 
that Delta Airlines, because they were, you know, impacted by this IT outage, um, they're looking for compensation, right? Because they have to pass on that cost some kind of way. So I'm sure they had cyber risk insurance. I'm sure they had different types of things in place. And even the um, managed service provider that was providing them service sh should have also had cyber risk insurance. So someone has to foot the bill when things like this happen. So you definitely want to um, you know, talk to your insurance carrier um, to see if they have those protections available. I know even on a personal note, USA even starts offering um, through another carrier, I think it's called Blink, where you can even get personal cyber insurance. Um, I had um, a colleague of mine who was um, a victim of identity theft. And um, I mean, the person had like took on her complete persona. Um, they actually when they were actually doing, um, this is what physical security, they were actually hitting mailboxes. Like, you know, you have the community mailboxes um, for like some of these master plan communities and your mailbox is not necessarily in front of your house. Well, some kind of way they were able to get the mailbox key, which was the main mailbox key and her driver's license was within the mail and they were able to take her driver's license and be able to open up all these different accounts. Um, luckily, she had this personal cyber security, cyber risk insurance, and her insurance company was able to help her be able to one, um, recover some of the damages and in real time. So it was something I think she says she paid like $20, $30 a month. So don't quote me, don't really know, not my thing, but it worked for her. So I just wanted to share that with you as well. So there are definitely a plethora of options out there available because as you can see, the landscape is changing. <laughs> Hackers are getting very sophisticated and they're using all different types of means. Um, you know, it's it's like one of the number one crimes right now. They're, they're very, very um, calculated cr criminals is what I like to call them, very calculated criminals. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, okay, so we have another question. At what stage of the business should we contact a cybersecurity firm? Um, this is this particular person has a small restaurant. Um, is it even necessary? So um, that would definitely be something based on your business and you know where you feel, what type of information you are using within your restaurant. If you're taking credit cards. Um, and you want some additional, you know, consultation on what to do or um, how they can help you with, you know, protecting maybe your credit card payments. If you're using, I know in most restaurants, they have some form of like audio visual, you have, may have monitors up, um, you may have um, a used computers or using some type of applications, or sometimes you're using different applications to take payments. Um, the sooner the better, um, but I would utilize um, any of the complimentary, because I don't like to say free because somebody's mm -hmm. putting the bill, use some of the complimentary services just to get a general landscape on what to do um, for your or for your business. Um, and then also, you know, speak with maybe a small business, um, small business consultant about um, what to do and what to look for when you're hiring a cybersecurity firm, right? Because you don't want to make sure that you are not buying more than what you need at the time, but you want to make sure that you're getting what you need as well, right? If that makes sense. So utilize some of these resources that are available to you um, and then make a decision based on your budget if that's something that you will need to be able to protect your business. Um, I always say, you know, it's about being prepared but it's also being prepared and, and keeping to mind. I know as a small business owner, I'm a small business owner. You want to make sure that you, you know, um, are always monitoring that bottom line, right? So. <laughs> okay, so here's the next question. Um, where can I find what regulations for security and privacy are required for educational businesses with children on site, um, such as protecting camera, camera video footage? Where can I find what regulations yeah. for security? So it would just, so data security and privacy, um, anytime you're dealing with um, um, children, um, the best protection mechanism that you can, you can use um, is making sure that um, one, if you're using cameras or videos, 
you have to have consent from the parents um, on if they want their child, one, to be filmed, two, um, how that footage is going to be used, right? Um, so I have some nonprofit clients that use, um, that, that serve children. And a lot of the regulations um, that they, they govern themselves on when it comes to dealing with the protection of those children is based on their research for their particular industry. Um, and then also what type of insurance they're required to have um, when they're when the children are with them and, and on site. But at a minimum, just basic cybersecurity principles, um, making sure that one, you have consent from the parents, um, two, that you're not putting cameras in areas um, that will uh, become a privacy concern, right? So um, you don't want cameras that will be looking or facing towards a bathroom um, or anything that will, you know, that can cause an issue as far as the child's privacy. Um, I always, even when you, I don't know if you, you I've been to a couple of like uh, things when you're dealing with footage or um, you have to put some type of warning to say that you are recording right? Um, and then uh, how you plan on using that footage, um, some of the parents may want to know that as well. So you should have something to kind of speak to that as well. Um, and then making sure that the cameras are have some form of security on it as well. Most of them will have things right out of the box that you can use within the application to put certain access controls. You don't want everyone to have access to those cameras, right? So you want to limit the access or who has the access to those cameras. You want to make sure that um, even, I know even dealing with um, children, there has to be background checks for people that are, you know, dealing with those children as well. So you want to make sure that the person that's accessing those cameras as well also is a cleared person that can also get to that information. So just some basic things that you can use um, and, I, and I can send you some other stuff offline um, to kind of help you put together a security plan just for dealing with um, an education business, dealing with children. Um, so, Jeremy, if you reach out to help at virginiasbdc.org, we can make sure you get that. Yes. Um, and then a follow up to the first question about the template. Um, I, I'm happy to say that this attendee, they're in the process of preparing an incident preparedness and response plan, and they would Ooh. love that template for their records. Did you say that's in the links that are on the screen that we're going to provide, or is there a special link for that template? Yes. Yeah, so most of the um, the links that are provided on here would have some templates, but I can send you some as well as a follow up when we send out the slides. Uh, we can include that. I have a we'll I have a couple the of slides. Templates. Yeah, okay. yeah, I have a couple of templates that she can use. Fabulous, thank you. And then I see another question. Would you please share an example of a cyber insurance writer for a small business? Yes. So you will see even um, so for myself, I have cyber risk insurance for my for my company, and it outlines. Um, and you got to read the fine print. So it really only talks more about data breaches and outages, right? Um, it doesn't really protect me from um, ransomware attacks, but it helps me with incident response. So it will help me with the recovery process with it. So each of the carriers all have different writers, right? So it's very important for you to have that conversation with your insurance carrier make sure that the um, the cyber insurance that they are offering, cyber risk insurance they are offering, um, will be beneficial to your small business. And in the event there may be, so there are levels to it, so it may be some additional cost that you may have to you know, put certain riders in place just for your specific industry, but those are things that you definitely should outline when you have that conversation. So say, hey, for instance, um, my small business deals with um, uh, HIPAA data. And um, I also am connected to certain organizations that, um, that we share information. What type of insurance do you think would be a, um, you know, a good insurance to be able to protect myself, my stakeholders, and some of the resources that I'm using? 
and they'll be able to give you um, the information and what costs will be associated and what different riders will need to be in place for that cyber risk insurance. So it's really having the conversation, but being prepared when you go in so they don't try to upsell you with a whole bunch of things that you don't need. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Kiana, do you see the next, the link that was provided? Would you like, should I share that? Yes, yeah, that's a great one. Yes. Okay. So, yes. So ready. Thank, you for, sharing that that, thank you for sharing. That's a great one. They have great templates as well. Um, what you'll, what you'll find even with a lot of, um, government agencies or even some of the resources that are available now, um, five years ago, a lot of stuff wasn't even available. They're always putting together or putting out new, more information because, you know, they want us, they know that technology is here, um, is we're going to continue to have these different trends and, um, and, and we, they want you to be prepared in the event, because I think as an, if we're all the organization, regardless of the size is prepared and have things in place, it makes everything work together, you know? So, um, we'll send out some, some additional templates, but that was a great one too. Ready.gov is a great site as well. Yeah, I just dropped that in the chat for anyone who wants to um, copy that one down. Yeah. Um, do we have any other questions? We have time. Pick Kiana's brain. <laughs> and if you, if you don't, if you think of something later on, you can always shoot us an email and we'll, right. we'll send you out some more information. But, Absolutely. you know, just to bring it all back home, the key here dealing with any trend, regardless of trends or things that are happening, is to be prepared. Um, right. Although I know, I always like to go back to CrowdStrike as my case study for the day. The mm -hmm. one thing the CEO, um, what I was proud that he was able to get, you know, he was able to speak to his stakeholders and his customers in real time with a solution, right? Imagine something like that happening and he had no plan, he had no solution. Um, the, you know, he, can, he can't prevent things from happening but being prepared was the key to all of that, right? And even though there's still some residual things happening, it's only going to make his organization stronger and the customers that he support and them even understand the importance of being prepared, right? And them having process in place and them having things in real time that they can work together to overcome, you know, incidents like this. Okay. We did have another question pop in. So uh, malware virus protection on PCs versus network router level packet detection. Do you see this intrusion prevention are both required, recommended? So all, all of them is always recommended. I wouldn't necessarily re say required because it will be based on your organization and what you're trying to protect. So it all goes back to putting together those critical assets and things that you have in your infrastructure and then putting together a plan on when, when is it appropriate? I mean, at the, at the very minimum, you should always have at least some malware or virus protection, right? That's, you know, that's a standard best practice. Now, when you start getting to network and router levels and having packet detection and intrusion prevention, there are great tools and techniques that can help you as well. Um, you definitely want to use, I like to call it defense in depth, meaning you want to give a mini defensive mechanism in place to be able to help, you know, your infrastructure to be able to um, be positioned in the event that someone is trying to, you know, inf um, trying to um, access your organization. So I would say highly recommended. Um, to definitely at the minimum have the malware virus protection. And in some incidents, if you're using laptops, have some type of laptop security as well, um, some kind of way to be able to uh, have remote access or be able to do a remote wipe, because if you lose it, right, you want to be able to get to your information in real time as well. So it's on a case by case basis. And sometimes that's when bringing in an ex expert like a cybersecurity professional or using a managed service provider, if that's not your area of expertise, that may be something that you can think about as um, to help you be able to navigate as well. Uh, Kiana, I will also add that one was a follow-up to the, it was the same attendee who had the childcare question about the um, cameras and all. So yes. And if that makes a difference being in the childcare industry. Yes. Yeah, so you, yes. Even with being in the childcare industry, you definitely should at least have the malware and virus protection. Um, if you are using um, routers, um, you definitely would like to have some type of um, intrusion prevention tools or techniques um, to help 
as your defense mechanism, but also putting those access controls and securities, having the correct policies and procedures are going to be very crucial as well when you're dealing with children. Um, just a quick follow up to that same attendee. Um, can you recommend good resources, forums, blogs to stay up to date on leading edge cybersecurity trends and best practices? Yes. So um, I like to set up Google alerts um, based on my industry so that I can get information in real time. There are a few um, ones that I follow closely, um, which most are, are from the CISA.gov um, website. That's a great one. Um, the Federal Trade Commission is another one. Um, they usually have great resources. Um, the Ready.gov is another one that's great as well. Um, subscribe to those. You'll get updates as they come in. Um, to stay abreast of some of the trends and best practices. I like to, I like to stay with government approved agencies because I, I, I tend to believe that they have the most relevant and up-to-date information versus sometimes blogs can kind of get, you know, subjective depending on who's delivering the blog. So I like to, to steer with my government agency. And of course, I'm gonna give us another shameless plug. Virginia <laughs> SBDC has a wonderful website as well that has a lot of great resources. Um, okay, so we have um, an attendee who has an independent mailing and shipping center. Uh, they believe this information is critical for their industry, but they don't think there exists a cybersecurity structure mechanism um, for their type of infrastructure. How do you go about finding this out? Okay. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. So again, that so even if you have an industry that is very specific, right? There are just certain best practices that you can put into place and that you can get that type of information from any of the resources or websites that we have um, provided you here today. Um, it will give you a lot of information about what to do as far as like putting together um, a proactive or even a um, robust cybersecurity uh, infrastructure to help your, your, your business line. The key point to me is like, just like when you put together your business plan, write down all your critical assets, write down what type of protection mechanism you will need. Think about costs, right? Because there's a cost benefit analysis based on what you will need to be able to keep your business safe. But then there's things that you can utilize some of the free resources or complimentary resources to help you stay safe as well. Right. Do we have any other questions? Right now, Kiana, if you have any um, last minute insights or words to words of wisdom, because I know you do. <laughs> yes, yes. I would just end by saying just, you know, the, the best way to to keep yourself abreast with all these new trends and techniques is to be proactive, to, to you know, put together a plan, test that plan regularly. Right. Because one, one thing I would say, don't put a plan together and the dust just collect on it. Test it out within your organization, you know, make it a part of your regular staff meetings, make it a part of your culture, and you will definitely see a difference with even how your employees respond and how they are, um, will be prepared in the event that something happens. Fabulous. Well, thank you, Kiana, and thank you everyone who attended today. Um, as a reminder, you will receive an email with a link to the recording and to the slides. If you would like to, and those extra um, links um, we talked about. So yes. if you would like to sign up for upcoming webinars or access recorded webinars, please visit virginiasbdc.org forward slash training. This webinar and other SBD, SBDC resources are designed to be used in collaboration with your local SBDC advisors. You can sign up for a free and confidential session by email, emailing help at virginiasbdc.org or via our website. We hope to see you all at our next session. Take care. Thanks, Kiana. Thank you. Have a good Bye. day. You too. Bye-bye, everyone.